Hi, I'm Sam for Jump Cut Play and Jump Cut Online, and uh, welcome back to another video. So, really, for this, like uh, all great stories, we must start at the beginning. So, let's rewind it back to 2009. Well, say 2009, that's the end of the story. Well, it's complicated, you see. I used to go to this caravan site in Scarborough, which is on the coast in the UK, from about 2005 up to 2009, so a long time. I would look forward to that every day at school, and I can remember being picked up by my parents on a Friday after I finished school, half past three, and then we'd just drive straight to the coast, straight to the caravan site, and boom. And I had a lot of like formative experiences there, and one of them was playing video games with my friends. It kind of started out with Guitar Hero, I had Guitar Hero, so I thought it kind of cool that I would bring it and we'd all go to somebody else's caravan, we'd take it in turns, like taking it around, and we'd all play it, and we even like, at one point, got it set up inside like the little club on the caravan site, and we used to play it there on like a projector, that was pretty cool. But Call of Duty, specifically Modern Warfare, that was like the start of it, because I didn't really play a lot of games online until I got a PS3. And that was like the first game that I really jumped into online. And uh, as you probably expect, with most people jumping into it, you just get absolutely annihilated. Despite having the game then, it wasn't till after we left the caravan site for complicated reasons that I really started to like get stuck into it. And a lot of it was to kind of, I didn't realise it at the time so I was quite young, but I do now. It was to help me kind of cope with almost losing a group of friends because Facebook and stuff back then wasn't really something for someone my age back then. I was only like, I don't know, 12, 13. It wasn't really something you jump into and it was harder to keep in touch with your friends. You had MSN and stuff like that, but that could only get you so far. So I would keep in touch by playing Call of Duty and whatnot with my friends and we had like Bluetooth headsets and all that kind of stuff. And it was just a great way to not only like just bond but just keep those friendships alive and i really value that now especially with the release of world of war because that brought the zombies mode and that really changed things because it means a lot to me the zombies game and, and modern warfare game i mean i know on the surface they're quite violent war games but beneath them if you really think about it, it is a bonding experience between a group of people. Gaming was usually a solitary endeavour whilst I was growing up. I was always nose deep playing Pokemon on the Game Boy Color, my first handheld, progressing to the PlayStation 2 to explore the Misty Islands with Jack and Daxter, and indulge in some casual skating with Tony Hawk's American Wasteland after school. My mum would occasionally try to catch the Muse, nearly breaking the PS2 controller to Jack's frustration and aggressively grabbing the Game Boy out of my aunt's hand as she tried to conquer Mount Moon became a regular event during sleepovers. It wasn't until my first full-time job as a chef, when I'd just turned 20, that I met my comrades who favoured RPG over racing. Despite our gaming sessions at work being a significant improvement from the almost non-existent game presence at school, I still felt a repression of my geek side during my 20s. Within the safety of my own home slash bat cave, I would explore the wasteland and spend a ridiculous amount of time riding the sands of ancient Egypt in my winning Doritos copy of Assassin's Creed Origins. But conversations and social gatherings would remain on general gossip when I wanted to splurge on my latest trophies or additions to my retro collection. Two years ago, I met my partner and gaming finally became a shared obsession in full bloom. A mutual Nintendo Switch was purchased for Christmas. Her joy of exploring EOS and Final Fantasy XV became normal background accompaniment for everyday tasks. Playing Twilight Princess on weekends became well-deserved downtime, and attending events like Paris Games Week all added to a new lease of life where I could be who I wanted to be and fall asleep watching the latest episode of The Game Chasers on YouTube without being met by a deafening eye roll. Writing for Jump Cut about games and movies over the last five years has allowed me to express my passions infinitely through meeting a wonderful group of pop culture fanatics who encourage limitless creativity. Gaming is like a lifelong companion and fellow gamers can become family to create a unique support system for conquering planet Earth. 
Quarantine life is a strange routine to adapt to, but at least we have gaming to stay connected. For me, my favourite memory of multiplayer gaming was way back actually in 2008-2009, um, which was playing uh, Val's Left 4 Dead fantastic series on the Xbox 360. Um, I've definitely had really good times since then, but Left 4 Dead was just a brilliant game, um, but also coming at the perfect time. Um, in the campaign, you played with up to three other players, each controlling uh, distinct and sort of interesting survivor characters. They all had their own personalities, which made a big difference. Um, the idea was to work together and you fought your way through the zombie hordes uh, tried to get past this terrifying witch character um, and deal with whatever else the game's AI director threw at you until hopefully um, reaching the sort of designated escape point in the level. Uh, but the game's versus mode was my favourite because as well as those four players you had another team of up to four, so eight in total, uh, each controlling one of the special classes of zombie uh, and they were ready to sort of pounce or kidnap or they could sort of spew bile or charge at you um, and those tended to have either terrifying or quite often just hilarious consequences because what made the game such a social experience was that it was just as much fun really when things went horribly wrong as when they went to plan um, the sort of panic of a survivor getting picked off from the group or you know the zombie team working really closely to make a set up an ambush um, but then kind of followed it all falling apart and following a mad dash to try and cut off the route to freedom it was just brilliant uh, and what that meant really was that it didn't really matter if you were really good at the game or uh, kind of terrible like me uh, or if you got just distracted by chatting to one of your teammates so it made it very sociable because it was all adding to the entertainment one way or another either creating a thrilling set piece or just kind of rolling around with laughter outside our core group these sessions kind of introduced me to some new friends who I hadn't ever met in person, um, but who I stayed in touch with. And we set up these uh, regular, we call them Monday Funday uh, games nights, um, just so that everyone could kind of plan around them. And they survived for years as a result and, you know, made it through a few births, breakups and various other life events. Um, although it did peter out eventually. Um, and I've actually played less and less online over the past decade. Um, but what's interesting is that that seems to have changed again, um, particularly obviously with the recent lockdown, but really also just with um, me and my friends having you know, kids, nieces and nephews that have reached the right age to join in. And now they're sort of, you know, the games might have changed a bit. We might do more Minecraft and a little bit less, uh, less violent, but um, there is a spiritual successor called Back for Blood coming soon, so, you know, as soon as they're old enough, maybe we can get them to jump into that. So I never used to play online games. I always had a huge fear of playing them, mainly because of the random people online. It just scared me a little bit, and the amount of stories that you would hear back in the day of girls being bullied on Call of Duty completely put me off. So it's actually very surprising to me how much I love Fortnite. It was scary for me at first, but playing solo is a lot of fun. I don't feel the pressure to do as well as much as I would in a team situation. But mainly, Fortnite has a special place in my heart because it reminds me of one of the best years of my life so far. A bit of context for this, so I went to uni in Cornwall, met my boyfriend. He introduced me to a lot of new people, and some of them we didn't get to know as well at the time. But they actually moved back to Cornwall, and we ended up living opposite them, and made some of the closest friends I have. We would spend days over at their place playing Fortnite. The sound of the lobby screen just transports me straight back to that time. But sadly, they had to move away, some to London and the others to Norway. And firstly, I was sad because I know how terrible I am at keeping in touch. However, Fortnite came to the rescue and every so often we use it to have a good old catch up. And I'm so beyond grateful for the ability to do so through such a fun and ever-changing medium. It's especially been a lifesaver during the lockdown. I haven't played it as much since we were all together, and being able to chat to each other through this bizarre time is incredible, and I couldn't be more grateful for Fortnite right now. 
I always felt that video gaming was a hobby that kind of happened around me. It was one of those things that other people played and I would watch or offer completely unhelpful and unsolicited advice as a backseat gamer. And of course I enjoyed loads of different games. I was a massive Pokemon fan. I did get banned from Habbo Hotel for, you know, well, they called it entrapment. It's a long story. But I think that the thing that really stands out for me in my history with video gaming is the way that it can connect people even if they don't really seem to have that much in common. For my dad's 50th birthday some years ago, he was gifted an Xbox 360. There you go, that showed his age. That was the newest one out at the time. It was great. He rapidly became obsessed with Call of Duty, and every Friday night when mom cooked dinner, he and I would sit there and just, you know, kill some zombies, as you do on a Friday night to wind down from the working week. It was great because all it was was just us sitting there shooting the breeze and shooting some zombies and it was simple and it was fun it gave us a way to hang out without forcing any effort or anything like that and when i was in college i had a french exchange student called paul who came to live with us for a week as you would reasonably expect from a 17 year old french guy he was quite the dab hand at video games and call of duty specifically my dad thought Christmas had come early. He finally had someone who could show him all of the fun tricks in terms of all the cool new guns you can get and all of the cool things you can do. I'll admit I was a bit of an amateur. I was just quicker on the buttons than he was. So when Paul could show him all of these insider secrets on how best to win, he was over the moon. You know, all the fun excursions and day trips aside, it became clear that the highlight of the trip for Paul was actually sitting and playing Call of Duty with my dad for hours on end, which was actually really, really nice to see. These two people who had relatively little in common, you know, one's a 50-year-old British dude who speaks not a word of French, and the other's a 17-year-old French kid who speaks a little bit more English, would sit happily for hours laughing and joking and naming their machine guns after one another, which is a whole separate thing, but hey, they seemed happy with it. It was a really cool way to see two people connect. There wasn't a language barrier there anymore because they were just having fun together and spending time together. And it made me realize that video games to mean something to people and to connect people don't have to be lavishly animated RPGs. They don't have to be story laden. They don't have to be dramatic and art pieces. They can just be fun because that's enough. As long as people are having fun together, then they're staying connected and isn't that really what it's about? I mean, they are games after all. Fun's kind of the main thing. I wasn't much of a gamer as a kid. I had the first Game Boy. I've owned a PS1, PS2, a 360, a Wii, and currently I've got a PS4. But it's only really in a PS4 era that I found my calling with gaming. Even so, since the early days of the PS1, my earliest PlayStation memories revolve all around playing FIFA with my little brother. These games with my brother became titanic battles. What starts as a fun game between siblings invariably descends into brother-on-brother -brother violence. Either he or myself unwilling to accept defeat, regardless of the score, and attacking one another. It wasn't all violent, however. Through the many, many installments of FIFA that we bought over the years, we also frequently had co-op career modes. A personal highlight was a game where playing as England, my brother needed the loo, so he left briefly. Instead of pausing it, as the older brother, I took responsibility. I received the ball at left back with the best left back in the game, Ashley Cole, burst on the wing, cut inside and scored a belt from 25 yards. Probably my FIFA highlight. And yet, I was never that good at FIFA. Today, I am more than happy to admit that my brother is a much better player than I am, than I ever was, and I ever will be. But the impact that FIFA had on my gaming career, and of course, my relationship with my brother, cannot be understated. Nostalgia makes the heart grow fonder, or something like that. Based purely on memory of playing the game religiously, the tremendous movie tie-in, Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, is the greatest game of all time. When I discovered my colleague in work was both a massive Lord of the Rings fan, and also 
equally fond of the game, the number of conversations we had reminiscing about the levels in that game must be in the hundreds. Whether running around Helm's Deep, knocking down ladders, defending one of those final doors in the castle after the, wall, after the wall had been blown up, or wandering through Fangorn Forest, The Two Towers was my ultimate movie tie-in experience. I hit the jackpot with Rocket League. For a game that was launched for free on PlayStation Plus, I have sunk more time to getting good at Rocket League than any other game in my entire life. I've played it alone regularly, and I dedicated my time to getting better at the competitive scene. I eventually even hit platinum. But it also helps being best friends with a scientist, an old friend of mine called Max. As a massive Microsoft Excel fan, Max made a spreadsheet to, do to document all of our Rocket League games. We played a total of 30 three-game series, and he tracked every goal, every save, every point scored in a document that gives us both immense joy to revisit. One game, just looking at the spreadsheet earlier, stands out. It's a game in which Max had 12 shots to my 6. He made 3 saves to my 8. Yes, 8 saves. And I won 5-4. A massive effort from me on the defensive front, but a game I would have forgotten about completely if not for this mammoth spreadsheet that Max dedicated so much time to. Games have done so much for me, but the connections I've formed throughout games, both in my family, with friends and with colleagues, are memories that I will cherish forever.